get asked by a lot of my students about how to get better tone, better sound out of their instrument. Um, and when people first start, you know, partly they're just, their fingers are maybe not strong enough and they don't have calluses. Um, but then after you kind of get into playing, um, there, there are some things that can help that you can do. Um, you know, practice doing your, your songs and your scales and just make sure you have really good, clear tone on every, every note. You kind of want to not be right on top of the frets or it sounds like thunk. You kind of want to be right up near them, but not on top of them. And all this stuff goes also for the guitar. Um, also, uh, to get good sound, you may want a, a, a nice pick. So I usually recommend for both guitar and mandolin, something that's not something that bends easily, something that sort of stands up to it for itself. Um, I have here a blue chip, uh, a TPR 50, but you know what, you don't have to necessarily get a blue chip. Um, I, I have a couple others that I tend to like here. Um, as you remember, uh, here's a nice, I think this is a, a 1.5 millimeter, but just something that's at least like a heavy or a medium, something that, that's gonna go with you. Um, and I'd say, especially on mandolin, where you have two strings together, you have to hit and get a lot of volume out of. Sometimes, I, you know, it, different people can make a lot of sound with different picks, so there's no right or wrong to it. Um, but uh, if you want a little bit more warmth in your tone, you may try uh, some different thicknesses and brands and types of picks, different uh, materials they could be made out of. And you may uh, experiment with all sorts of things and all of a sudden just go, oh, this is great. And then uh, six months later, you have something else where you say, oh no, this is great. And that's fine. You know, you don't have to wed yourself to one idea or one set of strings. Honestly, I've had, I've had uh, both mandolins and guitars that have their own opinions about the strings they like. So. Um, I have some different brands of guitars and uh, different ages of guitars and one set may like a certain type of string. So I put it on all of my guitars and some of the other guitars just sound awful with those strings on. Um, and uh, you know, just cause that dress looks great on your girlfriend does not mean it looks good on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, um, so experiment experiment and just maybe even write yourself notes or, or take a little video if you can't remember what the last string sounded like when you put the next ones on. Uh, but I've definitely had some older instruments where I, I put the strings on that I liked on my new guitar and and they didn't have much mids or sustain or low end or something and I put a different brand on. I was like, oh, this thing sounds great now. So before you give up on an instrument, um, try some of these little things for, for tone. Um, another thing that can be a big deal for not giving up on an instrument that you think, oh, this thing's awful, you know, uh, or I really need an upgrade. Maybe you do need an upgrade, but um, also having a good luthier, a good instrument fixer, you could take it in and just have it for a checkup, you know, say, do I need a setup or something? Um, and if you're not sure what that means, that's like how high the strings are off of the, the fretboard, um, you know, how your bridge, you're not, how it's all laid out. You may have some um vibrations you may have some buzzing and it, it may be that it's just a simple setup job they could just dress your frets and all of a sudden this instrument's gonna sound great yeah so you can do a lot with a good setup with having the the frets dressed nicely having the bridge adjusted um and this all this stuff goes for guitar and for mandolin um on mandolins of course we can adjust our our bridge a lot more easily um on our shop guitar you can but on the more standard style here you have a fixed bridge so you'll have to probably take it to someone if you're not already trained in these things some things you can try at home some things maybe better not um another couple things you might want to think about is a humidifier so um in the winter when it gets really dry sometimes the instruments the action will get lower and lower and it'll start sounding like ugh, it, it won't have a big ring and sustain anymore it loses its warmth you can get a lot of that back either by putting a humidifier in the case with it or humidifying the whole room. Maybe put all your instruments in one room with a good humidifier. Um, and you'll be amazed at, at how happy your instruments might be getting a little bit of humidity. Um, and also if you aren't careful with the humidity levels, you may want to just get a humidity gauge. Do not trust those ones in the case. Mm -mm. I have not found them to be honest, but a separate humidity gauge for the room. Um, and 
uh, it'll keep it from cracking because a lot of nice instruments will actually, especially the older ones, actually crack. I've had some of my students that have cracks that went right up the guitar, right from the, the bridge, right on up and it's awful. Um, so anyway, humidifiers. Um, another thing that is going to help you with your tone is being able to relax and breathe when you're playing. I know that sounds a little silly to some of you that are used to breathing all the time, but I see people do it all the time uh, with my students and when I lead like my, my student jams and teach at camps and you have people that are not used to playing with others or taking a soul and they hold their breath and they tense up. So it's kind of like a martial art, you know, you want to try to, you know, play while you're, you're breathing and you're relaxed and you're ergonomically uh, not death gripping your instrument or your pick. Um, you know, you don't want to drop them, but you want to actually have the blood flowing. Um, also, where you impact the strings with your pick is going to give you different tones. Not any of them are necessarily right or wrong. Just notice them. Um, so if I... Uh, there I am here. And there I am back towards the bridge. Um, so you get a different brightness, a different... Uh, attack and that's the same with, with the guitar so um and like i said i've had so many students ask me this that i just decided it'd probably be a great thing to to cover uh for all of you guys so there's right on the sound hole make use of these uh, variabilities. You know, just know they're there, experiment with them. You may find that on a certain song, you may want to just head back here for a certain part of the song to give it a little extra, extra pop. You like that Christmas. Some people like being back there almost all the time when they're playing. They like that, that ring. Some people like the warmth. Um, and like I said, Dynamics is huge, so within your own playing, you may find for certain songs or certain parts of song, you want that sound or this sound or this sound, um, and use it. It's all tools that we can have fun with. And, you know, music is fun. We're supposed to be playing. So it is playing music, so play with it. And uh, just like kids learn, you know, the more you play with your toys, the more you figure out and the more fun it is. So um, anyway, this is Tara Linhart. Uh, feel free to check out my website, uh, www.taralinhart.com. And um, hit me up if you're interested in lessons or any follow-up on any of these things. Um, anyway, have fun out there. Keep on picking. <laughs>